Hi, this is Dave Cabellis. Today I'm going to talk to you about whole server migration with dynamic clusters. If you remember, we introduced dynamic clusters in WebLogic Server 12.1.2. In WebLogic Server 12.1.3, we've enhanced dynamic clusters so that you can now use whole server migration with dynamic clusters. Whole server migration is a high availability option for a cluster that enables a managed server to be automatically restarted on a new host if the original host fails or if the server can't be restarted on the original host. Whole server migration is important for JMS message processing and for transaction completion. Oracle provides complete choice when it comes to cloud infrastructures. For private cloud, Oracle has built products and tooling that enable you to provide a complete internal cloud that supports software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service models. This product set spans the whole stack from hardware, including Exologic and Exadata operating systems, middleware, including our subject for today, WebLogic Server, to applications and management tools. Oracle also hosts a public cloud built on those same products that also provides software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service capabilities. You can choose to mix and match between the worlds of private and public clouds and move your application workloads to and from as needed. For all cloud scenarios, there are some key required capabilities, including resource sharing, self-service, usage metering, and availability and scalability. My subject today, whole server migration with dynamic clusters, falls squarely into that last bucket on the slide, availability, elasticity, and scalability. In case you haven't heard, in WebLogic Server 12.1.2, we added dynamic cluster configuration. A dynamic cluster is a new, easier way to configure clusters. Dynamic clusters make it very easy to configure a new cluster. You no longer have to individually configure managed servers. Instead, you configure a cluster with the number of servers you want, and you configure a server template. From there, the system maps out managed servers with attributes inherited from the server template and calculated where necessary. Dynamic clusters also make it easy to scale up the cluster. You can simply increase the number of dynamic servers in the cluster. WebLogic maps out the new managed servers on the fly. With this ease of configuration and scale out, dynamic clusters can be a building block for elasticity in a cloud environment. So let's review some key components for dynamic clusters. First of all, uh, they use server templates. A server template encapsulates the configuration for all of the managed servers in a dynamic cluster. Uh, servers inherit dynamic changes to the template at runtime. So if you make a change to the template, all of the servers based on, the, on that template um, inherit those changes. Server templates also provide tokens for differentiation. So for each managed server in your dynamic cluster, for a string value that needs to be different, you can insert these macros or tokens that get expanded when the server starts. Uh, so in our example today, we'll talk about a floating IP address, and in that floating IP address, we'll use a token that represents the the number of the server, so server one, server two, server three. So that number gets inserted, and that way you can get a, a unique floating IP address. There's also a dynamic servers mbean. This is a child of the cluster mbean. This mbean defines the number of servers in, in the domain. It defines a link to the server template. It defines the mapping of managed servers to machines, and then it also defines uh, listen port mapping if you've uh, if you've enabled that. Uh, lastly, there are server lifecycle runtime mbeans. These mbeans store or reserve the managed server name, the machine mappings, the port mappings uh, that are defined by the uh, defined by configuration in the dynamic servers mbean. These server lifecycle runtime M means give you something to work with when you want to start a server. So a node manager can call them or can call into them to gather information to start a server. When you use a start script, these server lifecycle runtime M means have already reserved things and, and defined, let's say, server names, uh, which are necessary for starting a server. So these are uh, some key components. They're a bit under the covers, but they're, uh, they're really something to be aware of as, uh, as you configure a dynamic cluster. So let's take a look at whole server migration. As I mentioned earlier, whole server migration is a high availability option for clusters. When a server fails and can't be restarted on the same host, the migration infrastructure makes sure that the server is shut down 
on its previous host and restarts the server on a different host automatically. Whole server migration is a solution for handling process completion where state is managed by the server. For example, JMS persistent messages are tied to a JMS server. Uh, with whole server migration, when the server is restarted, the JMS messages on the server become available for processing again. Same for transactions. With whole server migration, the transaction manager in WebLogic Server can pick up where it left off and complete or roll back any pending transactions that were managed by the server. There are a couple of important pieces to this puzzle. Node managers are the processes that start and stop servers. The migration system calls into node managers to determine the availability of a machine and to start and stop servers when needed. There's also a leasing system that servers use to communicate their health to the migration infrastructure. After you start a server, the servers are granted a lease to run. They each update their lease periodically. The leasing system can be in memory, we call that consensus leasing, and that's what I'll use in a demo, or it can be in a highly available database. So here's how the whole thing works. So periodically, servers update their leases. When a number of lease updates are missed, the system considers that server to be defunct. Even if the server is running, if it can't update its lease, it will shut itself down to prevent conflicts. From there, the migration infrastructure grants a lease to another host in the system and calls the node manager on that host to restart the managed server. There are a few important configuration attributes that need to be set to enable whole server migration with a dynamic cluster. You definitely need to define floating IP addresses. You need to enable automatic server migration. You need to enable leasing, and you need to define the candidate machines. For doing this, server template configuration is really important. So in the server template configuration, that's where you define the listen address for servers in your, in your dynamic cluster. Uh, with that, you can define, uh, we can use that macro that I mentioned earlier, as shown on the screen here, where we've got a, a listen address that says 192.168.100.10, and then the last digit would be, uh, would be the, uh, the ID or the ID number of uh, the managed server. So if you're starting server 1, this would be a 1. If you're starting server 2, it would be a 2. We also need to enable automatic server uh, migration for the servers based on the template. So that's really important. At the cluster level, you have to define, you have to enable uh, a leasing system. Uh, and then for JMS and JTA, you also need to store that, the persistent data in, in uh, storage that's available wherever the managed server will start. Uh, so that could be in shared file system, can be in a database, whatever you need there. So let's actually take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's walk through the process of configuring whole server migration for a dynamic cluster. It's really pretty easy. So in my environment, I have three virtual machines set up. I have um, a host here. This is admin server host. This is really for hosting the admin server only. I have the admin server running here. Um, and then I have two other virtual machines that act as um, host for managed servers. So I have machine zero and I have machine one. So this is already set up and running in my environment. So if we switch back to the admin server we could take a look here and see let's take a look at uh, the machines I have configured here we go so let's take a look at um, you see this is machine zero uh, and really what's important here is the node manager how we're going to get to the node manager uh, I'm using plane here here's the uh, IP address of my node manager and the port of course that's running so I have that set up for um, the other machine as well on the the other so it's machine zero and machine one uh, let's take a look at the dynamic cluster so if we look here at clusters you see dynamic cluster uh, the first thing to look at here is the servers tab so the top of the servers tab encapsulates a lot of the information on that dynamic servers mbean that's a child mbean of the cluster that I talked about it tells us you know what template we're using for dynamic servers in this cluster it tells me the number of servers um, I'm, I have configured to run I'm calculating listen ports and I'm calculating machine associations 
So I'm saying that uh, I can start manage servers in this dynamic cluster on any machine that starts with the name or starts with the string M-A-C-H. So it'll start on, MA, on machine one and uh, machine zero. It won't start on the admin server host. Um, so we've kind of set that up on purpose. Uh, if we take a look, let's see where we are with servers running. So we have, um, I have the four servers configured, uh, three of which are running, and you can see how the machine uh, mappings worked out, right? So machine zero, machine one, machine zero, and if I were to start uh, the server four, it would start on machine one. So I have two machines running on, mach or two servers running on machine zero and one on machine one. So let's take a look at the server template. So here's my server template. And this um, one of the most important parts here is this listen address. And this is where I use that macro, uh, the dollar ID macro. So this, uh, in this case, I'm using the IP address 192.168.200. Dot two something. So this uh, for server one, it would be 21. For server two, it would be 22. For server three, it would be 23, and so forth. So that's, uh, and the floating IP address, of course, is important for whole server migration. As you move these managed servers from machine to machine, you want the IP address of that um, that clients can listen to to be uh, in the same in the same place. So now let's look at the cluster configuration again. Oh, no, let's look at migration first. So we have to enable migration. Here it is, automatic server migration enabled. So you have to uh, select this checkbox. And now all servers based on this template will be migratable. Now, of course, we do have to have um, the cluster set up for migration. So um, I do have. Um, I have a, a set of machines selected here. Uh, if you don't select any machines, it'll migrate to anywhere in the cluster, uh, any machine that's available to the cluster. If, uh, if not, uh, if, you, if you define here, then this is where uh, migration can happen. Uh, migration basis. So here I've set up, I've enabled consensus leasing here. So let's, let's actually kick this off. So let's go to... Um, Machine zero here. Machine zero is running uh, two managed servers. If you remember, it's got uh, dynamic cluster number or server number three running, and it's got server number one running. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna kill server number one, and we have to do something like a kill instead of a graceful shutdown. On graceful shutdown, no migration would get uh, would get triggered. But in something like an abrupt shutdown, an abrupt failure, that's where uh, that's where you'll see migration trigger. Uh, so we're gonna first we're gonna grip for uh, the process. So I'm I'm uh, I'm looking for the process for dynamic cluster server three, and I see that this is my this is my uh, uh, my process number. So now I'm gonna type kill uh, minus nine one six six eight seven. So that will abruptly kill that server. Uh, so we can see there's some activity going on here. And then if we look at uh, this other machine, uh, we'll see after a few seconds. It'll it should take about 30 seconds. Um, then we'll see uh, we'll see the results of the migration machinery kicking in and saying, okay, so somebody else needs to run this uh, this managed server for us. Who else is available? Oh, it looks like machine one is available. So let's um, let's start it on that machine. Uh, so, like I said, it takes about uh, about 30 seconds. Each uh, lease updates are 10 seconds apart, and it's three failures that will uh, that will trigger migration. So, while we're waiting, I'll I'll speed up the video. So there you see it. Um, we see the uh, we see whole server migration starting, we see um, the node manager brings on that IP address. And then uh, now it's starting this, it's starting uh, server, managed server three on this, on machine one. Uh, so just to review, right, so we, we configured uh, whole server migration, we enabled the uh, floating IP addresses, we set up consensus leasing, um, and then we killed a server, and now we've seen the, the results of killing that server. We see the automatic migration happening here.
Just to review what we talked about today, Oracle provides complete choice when it comes to cloud. We have a full set of capabilities that provide infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service for your private cloud and Oracle's public cloud. Dynamic clusters provide simplified configuration and simplified scale out for a cluster. Whole server migration enhances the high availability for a cluster, especially for JMS. A combination of dynamic clusters and whole server migration is available starting in WebLogic Server 12.1.3. If you want to learn more, you can download and install WebLogic Server 12.1.3 and try out dynamic clusters for yourself. Uh, there's a great interactive tutorial on Oracle Learning Library, uh, and there is extensive documentation on these subjects in our product documentation set. You can also get involved in the WebLogic community through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and other pathways listed here. Uh, I really encourage you to do that. Uh, we're, we're happy to have the interaction, and we're happy to, uh, to hear what you have to say. So that's it. Thanks for watching my video.